My people you don't settle. What I don't pass Gary, you. No be smart, you know. This one, eh, the matter where they happen for Nigeria, now you don't want to see eh, season film. Oh. The one way they for grand so the one way they for grand so no be smart, you know. Big one, I expose come as I the word say go the to toss it. Ah, waiting they happen. In short, they would really say if they, they catch this kind thing for our leader hand, what you come be the one way be say go come happen for the citizen. If they, all this one be say that our leaders they do, eh? Not be say that they give the citizen bad name. Then they close big, big opportunity, the door of opportunity. Then they close that for the innocent citizen. My people don't settle. Ha, don't still meet Atiku. No be small one now. They thought they no be only Tinubu shit for body. Oh, say the one way be say Atiku do eh? Hey, no be small. Oh. My people go like me. Kuna go watch video. Me kuna see the kind thing when we say the people when we say that they run say they want become president. But the one way they thought say Tinubu no we say. I never get you thing where you do what you put in the book for there. Those one too, they are not so clean. But the one where we say he win against the book for, chick, uh, for for court for US. Now, that one self, still way through against the book that nah, don't still fall upon himself. Who we go can't trust, we no can't understand. My people make una go watch video, make una consider national disgrace. Not be smart, you know. Our leaders say, what is that they cost us for this country? <laughs> not be smart, we allow, make una go watch video. It's had a great weekend. Yes, yes, yes. yes. All right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Let's begin what's trending. On Sunday, spokespersons of Nigeria's former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, held a press conference in Abuja to address allegations of forgery levied against Atiku by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's spokespersons, some of who claimed that affidavits backing Atiku's change of name in 1973 from Sadiq Abubakar to Atiku Abubakar were forged because they were signed on a Saturday. Well, during the press conference, Frank Shaibu, Atiku's special assistant on communications, brought forth evidence of affidavits signed on a Saturday in the same year in 1973 and challenged President Bola Ahmed Tinubu to respond in the same way to allegations of forgery and other allegations levied against him. Shaibu also asked the president to confide in Atiku instead of hiring a horde of media aides to confuse the issue. As a practitioner of democracy, especially someone who sits on the chair of a president, you must live above board. A president must mirror the moral rectitude of trust and transparency. To be called the president of a country is to be an approximation of the values that such a country stands for. Nigeria does not stand for forgeries and impersonation. It is therefore on this note that we yet again call on President Bola A. Tinubu to follow the example of Atiku Abubakar, to clear the air about the doubts and Kurukere about his past, just as we have done openly, publicly, and we took the pains to go to Lagos, his own Lagos, where he ruled and superintended and has been lord over for over 23 years. Since Lagos is his domain, we ask Bola A. Tinubu to boldly walk into government college Lagos and make available to the world, just as we have done today, a copy of the 1970 certificate with which he sought admission into the Chicago State University. He may, well, he may as well tell us the business center inside the Luwale market in Lagos, where the, where the document, the certificate was printed and given to uh, Chicago State University, or where that certificate was gotten from which was presented to the Independent National Electoral Commission. And if assuming the president is afraid to come out clean, because we can only assume at this point that Bola A. Tinubu has some skeleton in his, in his closet or his cupboard, he should feel free to confide in us. You don't need to have over 2,000 media aides for you to do your job well. We are just three of us here, yet we went to Lagos, Tinubu's Lagos to investigate and put to rest the issue of articles of feed of it, which was signed on a Saturday. We took it upon ourselves to say, look, we must come out clean. We cannot be on the same page with a certificate forger. Of course, you know, this press conference generated a lot of reactions. I'll just take only one, Ayo, before I come to you. This person is Oluchi. She wrote, uh, Atiku's media team went for the jugular today in the press conference. It was a knockout punch on the APC. Too much 
Pepe Demo. I mean, wow. for me, I think, uh, you know, Frank Shaibu really, really went for the jugular there. I mean, he hit all the right notes. And I, I think it was important that he said that, you know, instead of going forward to block access to people knowing who you really are, just come out and talk about your identity, go to Lagos. Like he said, only three of them went to Lagos to find out, you know, and, and to present these documents, if we can pull up those documents, those affidavits, to show that Atiku Abubakar is the same person as Sadiq Abubakar, because if you recall, Atiku Abubakar had written Wayek in the name of yeah. Sadiq Abubakar, and then they said because the affidavit was signed on a Saturday, it was forged, but they have, you know, brought out these documents to show that um, those documents were also signed on Saturdays back in 1973. Ayo, your oh, take. Wow. Okay, so first of all, I must say that the Kurukere was just yeah. so hilarious. But um, as that tweet had mentioned, absolutely mm -hmm. true yes. in terms of the fact that Frank Shry, when I was saying it, that he has earned his pay <laughs> yeah. and when he was speaking, that he, he gave a detailed response to what the um, APC had accused the Atiku Abubakar camp. But beyond the mod, but I won't call it mod slinging, but the mm. back and forth between the parties, mm -hmm. the matter is now in court. It's going to be heard today Absolutely. in court from um, at the Supreme Court. So it's going to be decided in court who is lying, whose certificate is false, whose certificate was forged or not, if the evidence will be admitted in court. But one of the things I want to say is this. As a nation, as a people, we have to begin to evaluate where we are in terms of our morality and the kind of nation that we're building. Because what happens often is that someone says, accuses or makes an allegation that you forged the certificate and your response, rather than going to pre present evidence that you didn't do it to put paid to the, you know, to the, to the insult and to, the, to this grave allegation, you then begin to say, hey, you too, you forged certificate. Mm. So it's now a battle of who did, whose sin is bigger, as opposed to saying that actually I didn't do what she was accusing me of doing. And that is what we have seen a number of times. Yes. And perhaps it's time to begin to elevate our consciousness at the kind of leaders that we have, whereby response to an allegation is not a counter, is not a counter allegation or saying, eh, eh, I'm justified in court or implicitly uh, making that statement, I'm justified because you too, your, your hands are not clean either. Mm. The question on ground that was asked, as was presented by Mr. Frank Schreiber, has not yet been addressed. Rather than spending so much energy and time focusing on the fact that, well, you are not clean as well, just Tell us, give us the document, give us the evidence. That's, That's all Nigerians and, you know, the Atiko Mubaka camp are asking for. Yeah. So for me, the lesson out of this is more about the fact that when we talk about, oh, this person has done bad, you're okay, well, there's a suspicion of this. Like saying, oh, Oji, you stole um, 10 Naira. Like, uh, okay, you stole, did, or, oh, did you steal 10 Naira? Or this, this um, outfit you're wearing, you stole it from whatever store you bought it. Mine, no. And you're like, oh, I'll no. give you the receipt. I'll show you the time <laughs> data. Exactly. <laughs> so my first and response store. before <laughs> saying that, oh, you to your yellow dress is also yes. stolen. is to say that this is my receipt. Yeah. It is mine. That's mm -hmm. all what, what we're asking for. Don't take people for granted. Don't um, abuse the intellect of Nigerians by saying that, oh, so let's stop this mm -hmm. counter. Anyways, they are in court now, which yes. is the, in the proper place mm -hmm. to finally get justice. But beyond the court is these things are easy. Right. We would have avoided all these processes. Absolutely. Show us evidence. That's Absolutely. all. Uh, Rafai, really quickly, uh, you know, Frank Shaibu has asked uh, Tinubu to, you know, maybe seek uh, advice from Atiku instead of hiring over 2,000 aides. You see, one thing is clear and simple. May God remind us where the race started to beat us from. We have lost our bearing as a country. Nigeria has now become a country that is a circus. So much joke. The president of a country, its educational background is suspect. We are going to court to determine that. So what else do we even want to know again? And other people that bring up the matter, the bandwagon is quick to also now say, oh, you two, you have a skeleton in yeah. your cupboard. I don't support anybody. Anybody that has skeleton, they should be able to bring it out. But once the article team has come out to the fore, 
The president too should be able to come out. It would like be this. nice to see if you recall, Peter Obi had that same yeah. press conference stating the same and, thing. Just and come out and what you is know, going on. But you see, we live identity. in a world where some people are paid mm -hmm. to gaslight Nigerians mm -hmm. and to distract them. So please do not be distracted. Mm -hmm. And somebody gave an analogy. When you see people trying to turn the issue around and gaslight, just like how some people said, public opinion does not count. Somebody gave an analogy, says, see. When another bird called, I think, a crawl mm. comes on the back of the eagle to attack the eagle, you know what the eagle does? The eagle doesn't fight back. The eagle continues to fly at a higher altitude. So when it gets to that altitude, the owl doesn't have the capacity to get in oxygen to relate with the eagle at that point, so it dies off. Yeah. So once people start this gaslighting conversation, insist on the most important conversation because the president is the president now. Right. So he needs to be able to tell us the truth. Mm -hmm. And don't waste your time replying to these gaslighting conversations. Right. Once it's been clarified, yes, like I said before, Atiku Abaka and other candidates have a right to be able to respond to the man. Once they clarified, stop responding to people that try to gaslight because distractors are trying to detract you away from the issue. Yeah. It doesn't stop the issue that it is sad for Nigeria that we have to go to court to even determine the certificate our president presented. All right. All right, Rufai. In another development, the Nigerian Senate and a former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Atahiru Jega, during a two-day retreat organized for senators in Akwa Ibom State, called for the amendment of the electoral laws to ensure mandatory transmission of election results and the unbundling of INEC, as well as diaspora voting. During the retreat, Atahiru Jega insisted that the chairman of INEC should not be appointed by the president of Nigeria, but by a joint committee of the National Assembly, who will then be subjected to public scrutiny with regards to knowledge, skills, good character, and non-partisanship. Jega also argued that all election cases should be resolved by the courts before the swearing in of the winners. Well, let's take some reactions. Uh, this person wrote, but Jega conducted the 2015 election where a lot of underage voters voted in Kano and presented the about two something edge that made Jonathan to call and congratulate Buhari. He only got off the hook because Jonathan didn't contest the results. He started what Mahmoud perfected. Well, another person there wrote, the Senate has 109 members. How many times have they honestly allowed their own votes to count since 1999? How many times did they use electronic voting? It has always been the eyes have it. Even when the nays are louder, they aren't ready for transparency. Don't be deceived. Um, Kayode, before I come to you, though, in the same vein, a former River State governor and the immediate past Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, who was speaking at the Nigerian Law School in a video, now making the rounds on social media, clarified issues on the first election that brought him into the gubernatorial office. Let's take a look. From Nomia, somebody got to face the left and come and run. Your governor, your governor's candidate. There was no primary. The law said that we what? Primaries. The court simply made two things. The first thing is to say, the law says you can't remove the person you have submitted without cogent and verified proof. Guess what the person said was reason? Security reasons. <laughs> I was rather an armed robber. Rather was that right. nothing. I've not been found guilty by any court. And the person submitted to INEC to say it was what? Security. So people say to, to them, if you say there is no independent candidate, and is there any independent candidate in the country? And our job is to decide who is the candidate of APC, uh, PDP, right? The moment we say this is the candidate of PDP, since nobody runs the election without the party, it means that the party is best that runs the election. If you say this is the candidate of the party, it means that it's what? The governor. God bless. You.
Well, it's nice to see the former governor there give his own side of the story, more importantly, at the law school. But um, uh, Atahiru Jega hit the right notes there, Absolutely. as well as the senators during that retreat. Is it something that we've always talked about? Yes. The fact that, you know, those cases should make sure, we should make sure that those cases are heard before the winners are announced. I loved also the fact that they touched on diaspora voting, very yes. important. Um, no, Kyle, that one is important yes. for me yes. because I spent uh, about 20 years years and I was one of those who in the UK was pushing that diasporans should have a right to vote and we should be encouraged well I'm not there anymore I'm in Nigeria now but while I was there we pushed aggressively and I must mention the fact that uh, no matter what anybody says about uh, Honorable Abu Kedabiri she was in strongly in support and she's being consistent about the support for diaspora and, uh, to be able to vote the money that comes into Nigeria, we know how much is coming into Nigeria from the diaspora. Everybody should be able to acknowledge the fact that if you're putting in that much in terms of investment into Nigeria, mm. then you should have a right to have a say in how the future of the nation uh, is shaped. Uh, the key thing here in terms of uh, Tahiru Jega's uh, statement is the fact that we have to overhaul the entire voting system Absolutely. in Nigeria. There is a need for a complete overhaul and a change in the policy that would compel INEC to do the right thing. On this last election, INEC failed every Nigerian. INEC failed every Nigeria on so many, uh, in so many areas. So there's a need for that overhauling. And then also one of the things that uh, crossed my mind on this particular issue is in terms of uh, the person who heads INEC should not be the person that the president wants. Mm -hmm. It should be an open opportunity for Nigerians of quality character who will not be listening to whatever the president says and who will not be in that situation where even the president's body language determines what they will do. It seemed like Atari Rujega was looking at the body language of Buhari and possibly the person who eventually becomes the president. That is wrong. That should never have happened because a man like uh, Mahmoud Yakubu okay. should not be in a situation where he made a promise to Nigerians that this is what you will see as the results are being announced in real time, to quote him, because I watched that video so many times, in real time, you will see it. And if Nigerians had seen it in real time, all of this argument will never have happened. There will Absolutely. be no argument about the results. We'll see it in real time, and that will make it a lot easy. And I don't know why he is not able to defend that position. Well said. We'll take another story then. Over the weekend, a 50,000-man rally in support of Palestine was held in Lagos to demand justice for the people of Palestine and put an end to the continued bombardment of Gaza. By the Israeli forces, the rally, which was organized by the Conference of Islamic Organizations, drew participants from various Muslim organizations, including civil society groups, students, and Islamic scholars across the country. Nigeria's representative for Amnesty International was also in attendance. The protesters are asking the federal government of Nigeria to put on hold all diplomatic relations with Israel until the two-state resolution is achieved. If Muslim in Nigeria, we are saying that let us free Palestine. People who have been subjugated for a long, 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 long time, I think we should be on the side of humanity so that if anything should happen to them and we, you know, look other way, it can happen to us too. Remember what happened in South Africa. The whole world stood behind the people of South Africa in order to overcome the appetite. And I think this should also be extended to the people in Gaza, the people in Palestine, because they are being killed, their women are being killed every time they are children. They are not going to school. So it is just humanity. So we are calling for peace. We are calling for stability. We are calling for justice. Right, if, I, I, if you recall, last week we took a story like this where the uh, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs had called for Nigeria to support Palestine. And at that time, you know, we you cleared the air that, you yeah. know, Nigeria's foreign policy is to, you know, is to call for peace yeah. and not to take sides. Yeah. But also having said that, uh, like I said, 
that day, these Islamic uh, scholars, they have their right to speak out, they have their right to protest, as always. I mean, the call for uh, ceasefire on Gaza is a very serious call. As you can see, there's been a lot of protests across the world because of the devastation on the Gaza Strip at this moment. I mean, we're not going to not admonish the fact that there was that horrific yeah. terrorist attack by the Hamas people. Yeah. But at this point, people are calling for some sort of support for Palestine. I believe there's aid already okay. in Palestine okay. at the moment. So, Oji, let, let us state things categorically. Their emotions and their religious slants to the matter. If you call an average Christian, mm -hmm. They'll tell you about the support for Israel. If you call an average media, they'll tell you about the support for Palestine. Mm -hmm. But we as a media house mm -hmm. and Nigeria's foreign policy outlook says we are non-aligned. Yes, we, we are to call for so peace. So we have yeah. to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. We can call for peace across both warring parties. And Absolutely. we hope and envisage that very soon, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have probably a ceasefire for them to start having conversations. And despite the bombings over the weekend, I mean, they released some Israeli hostage. So it shows that obviously Israel is making contacts. And we just hope that peace level goes on. Mm -hmm. And also, yes, other religious groups have a right to be able to ventilate their grievances. And I'll tell you, in the same vein, a controversial Onitsha-based cleric, popularly known as Odumeje, has warned Nigerian pastors not to pray for Israel. I mean, the ongoing war with the Hamas terrorist group in Palestine. Well, in a video that has now gone viral, Odumeje, while addressing his congregation, threatened to make any Nigerian pastor who keeps calling for prayers for Israel to go deaf and dumb. Let's take a look. I can do a grand pastor, all this part of the people, Marquis Lel, in your own country, Nigeria. You have never even prayed. Yeah, yeah, president, we don't know left and right. Don't pray prayer for your country. If I hear your pain, any pastor, yeah, Israel, I pray for you, eh? I make you do we. I make you, you become, what are they calling somebody that will be? Double. Eh? Eh? Double. I will make you, if you pray pimp for any, any Israel, 